Hi everybody. Welcome to the second video of the distance learning program. I hope that you and your families are staying safe and healthy. After watching the first video, you probably thought this is very different from our regular classes. And I wanted to ask you if it's difficult for you or if you're having any problems to please let me know by emailing me. You can email me at my email address up here on the board, or you can text me to let me know of any suggestions that you have that might make it a little bit easier for you or uh, ways that we might be able to improve this uh, learning process. So today we're going to start with lesson 2E, and if you want to take a look at your book, Ventures 3, you can please turn to page 26. Lesson 2E is about writing an explanatory paragraph about strategies for learning English. We are also going to focus on the present perfect verb tense. So these are the two main ideas of Lesson 2E. An explanatory paragraph about strategies for learning English means we're going to describe in a paragraph the different strategies that we might think of in order to learn English. And we're also going to study the present perfect verb tense. Now we've studied the present perfect verb tense earlier and uh, you probably remember that tense but we're going to review it just a little bit more. Now, with your books closed, I'd like to review the vocabulary and grammar from the unit so far. I'm going to ask you a quick question. Think about this. What have you learned about good strategies for learning English? What have you learned about good strategies for learning English? Now, here are some answers that you might think of. You might say, I've learned how to set goals. I've learned to practice outside of the class. I've learned how to ask questions or make guesses. These are different strategies for learning English. And we talked about that in the first video. The second part of this is that I want to discuss the present perfect verb tense. Remember, the present perfect verb tense uses the present tense of the verb to have, and you can say have or has, plus the past participle of the main verb. And the past participle of the main verb is always the third verb in the list. As you learn verbs, you always learn the present or the base form of the verb, then you learn the simple past, and we then learn the present perfect which is the past participle. So remember that the past participle is the third form of the main verb. Now think about this question. Have you ever set a goal for learning English? When you hear that phrase, have you ever, what do you think that means? someone asked you the question using the phrase, have you ever, would they be talking about something that happened in the past? Or are they talking about something that's happening now or in the future? What tense do you think that is? Well, when someone uses the phrase, have you ever, they're talking about something that happened in the past. And if they asked a question, have you ever set a goal for learning English? That means at any time in the past, did you set a goal for learning English? And how would you be able to answer that question? If you did set a goal at some point in the past for learning English, you could simply use a short answer like, yes, I have. And if you never set a goal for learning English in the past, if that never happened, then you could say, no, I haven't. 
So those would be the short answers for the question, have you ever set a goal for learning English? What about this question? Have you ever talked to someone in the supermarket in English? Now that means at any time in your life, did you ever talk to someone in the supermarket in English? And if you did, you would say, yes, I have. You use the same verb that was used in the question, have you ever? And if you never talked to anyone in the supermarket in English, you would say, no, I haven't. Here's another question for you. Have you ever had trouble understanding English on TV? And if at any point in your life you were watching TV and didn't understand what was happening or you didn't understand what the person was saying, you would say, yes, I have. And if you always understood everything that you watched on TV, then you would say, no, I haven't. So those would be the short answers for the question, have you ever had trouble understanding English on TV? Here's another question. Have you ever made a joke in English? If you did make a joke in the past in English, then you could say, yes, I have. And if you never made a joke, you would say, no, I haven't. Now we're going to turn to page 26 in the Ventures 3 book, Lesson 2E, about writing. Let's look at part one, before you write. This says, work in a small group, complete the chart with examples of strategies for learning English. Use the reading on page 24 and your own ideas. The first strategy is set goals. And in the book, it says examples from the reading, read for 15 minutes in English every day. Then you could write an example of how you have set a goal. You might say, write in English every day for five minutes. Then the next strategy is practice English. If you remember from the first video, what were some examples of practicing English? Remember in the second strategy, which was talk to everyone, there were a couple of examples of how people can practice English. One of the examples that was talked about in the book was speak with people in the store, at work, and in the park. It says, don't worry about making mistakes. So this would be an example of how people practice English by speaking to people at the store. If you go to the post office, you can practice speaking to the person behind the counter Anywhere you go, you can practice speaking English, even if you're talking with people that you don't know. Next, you can write an example of how you practice English. That would be in the third column. Finally, it says the third strategy, guess. What are some examples from the reading where the person had to guess. If you go back to lesson 2D, you can find an example of how the author was guessing. It says, for example, look at the speaker's faces and hand gestures, the way they move their hands to help you guess the meaning. This is a, an example of how a person can try to guess what someone who is speaking actually means. And finally, in the third column, 
you can write an example of how you've had to try to guess what a person means in the past. Now, let's look at part 2B. I'm sorry, 1B, where it says read the paragraph. It says, my strategies for learning English. We're right here in the middle of the page on page 26. There are two strategies I'm going to use to help me learn English. My first strategy is to learn more English vocabulary. There are many ways I will do this. For example, I'm going to learn one new English word every day. I'm also going to write my new words in a notebook. Another strategy I will use is looking for places to practice my English. For example, I'm going to talk to more English speakers at the store and at work. I can't wait to try these new strategies because I want to speak, read, and write English better. So this is a paragraph that the author wrote about his strategies for learning English. And you could write a similar paragraph to describe what your strategies are when you try to learn English. Now remember, when it says, for example, in the paragraph, details are going to follow that help explain what just came previously. So whatever the author just said, when you use, for example, it gives details about how the person can explain in greater detail about how to answer what just happened previously. So here it says, another strategy I will use is looking for places to practice my English. And it says, for example, I'm going to talk to more English speakers at the store. So this gives details about how a person is going to look for places to practice English. Now let's look at question number one. It says, what is the writer's first strategy? Now, if you're looking at the paragraph, you can see right here in the second sentence, it says, my first strategy is to learn more English vocabulary. So that answers the question number one, what is the writer's first strategy? He wants to learn more English vocabulary. Next, number two says, what examples does the writer give of the first strategy? Well, the first strategy is to learn more English and the examples that the writer gives come right after he says that. He says, there are many ways I will do this. And it says, for example, so that's going to give the details about what the ways are. It says, for example, I'm going to learn one new English word every day. So this is an example of how the writer is going to practice his first strategy. It says, I'm also going to write my new words in a notebook. So he's given two examples of how he's going to learn more vocabulary. First, he's going to learn one new English word every day. And secondly, he says, I'm going to learn, I'm sorry. Secondly, he says, I'm also going to write my new words in a notebook. Next, it says, what is the writer's second strategy? Now, if you look in the middle of the paragraph, it says another strategy I will use is looking for places to practice my English. This is the second strategy. He's going to look for places to practice his English. So the answer to the question would be, the writer is going to look for places to practice his English. Question number four says, what example does the writer give of the second strategy? Well, I just talked about 
how it says, for example, after he says, I'm going to look for places to practice my English, and that means these are details about how he's going to practice his English. It says, I'm going to talk to more English speakers at the store and at work. And I can't wait to try these new strategies because I want to speak, read, and English and write English better. Now, when the writer says, I can't wait to try these new strategies, what do you think that means? Normally, when people say, I can't wait to do something, that means that they're very excited about it. They're looking forward to it. So this writer, he wants to practice the new strategies and he's excited about trying to use these strategies to help him learn English faster. Finally, question number six says, do you think these strategies could help you? Now that's an individual question that each of you can try to answer. You can try to answer these questions and think of different strategies that might help you learn English faster. The last part of today's lesson is going to be on page 28, lesson F, another view. So please turn to page 28 in the Ventures 3 book. This says life skills reading, tips for taking tests. So we have seven tips, seven tips for taking tests. A tip is a, a, a good idea on how to do something better. So number one says, read the instructions carefully. Ask the teacher if you don't understand them. Number two says, skim the whole test before you begin. This will help you decide how to use your time. Number three, answer the easiest questions first. Four, don't spend a lot of time on one question. Go back to it later if you have time. Five, don't worry if other classmates finish before you. Pay attention to your own test. Six, leave time to check your answers. Make sure you have answered every question. Number seven, don't look at another student's paper. Be responsible for your own work. That means don't look at another student to try to get the answer. You need to answer the question yourself. Then it says culture note. During a test, don't look at another student's paper. Ask another student for help or help another student. These are types of cheating. And types means kinds, different kinds of cheating. Cheating means that you're not doing the work yourself. You're relying on help from another person to get the right answer. Let's look at part A. Read the questions, look at the tips, fill in the answer. Question number one. Which tip says to read the whole test quickly before you answer any questions? Well, that's what tip number two says. It says, skim the whole test before you begin. And skim, need it means that you need to read it as quickly as you possibly can uh, and try to get the meaning very, very fast. So the answer to the question would be, Tip two, which is B. Question two, which tip tells you to answer the questions you know first? Well, that's tip number three. It says, answer the easiest questions first. Question number three says, which tip tells you to skip the questions you don't know and go back to them later? Well, that's tip number four. That's answer B. It says, don't spend a lot of time on one question. Go back to it later if you have time. And finally, 
Question number four says, what word means read quickly for the main idea? And as I told you when we were looking uh, at the second tip, which said skim the whole test before you begin, that's when I told you that skim means to read it quickly and try to get the meaning as quickly as possible. So the answer would be C, skim. So I hope this video has been helpful to you. And remember, please email me if you have any suggestions about we can, how we can make this process a little bit better for you, okay? Thanks a lot, and please tune in next time. Bye-bye.